Hello, everybody from Miami, Florida. It was 7.15 in the morning on a Friday of a cold January in Washington. A young man in jeans and t-shirt with a baseball cap gets out of metro carrying a small case. He goes toward the bare wall at the top of the escalators near the exit and stops beside a trash can facing a shoeshine stand. The young man opens the small case and pulls out a violin. The small case stays open at his feet. He throws in a few dollar bills and some coins. Then he begins to play. It's the morning rush hour. The young man played for 45 minutes, performing six classical pieces. The acoustics was surprisingly good. The sound of violin was round and resonant. Hundreds and hundreds of people passed through, barely registering his presence. There were a few exceptions. A kid craned his neck and tried to watch as his mother continued to urge him onward. Just seven people came to a complete stop to listen to his music for a few minutes. About 20 people slowed their pace long enough to drop some money in this case, mostly pennies. One person gave him five dollars. One thousand ninety-seven people passed by. Almost all of them were on their way to work, which meant for most of them a C-level job. Your very own target. Change of scene. The White House. The violinist is playing. Some of the most powerful people in the world crowd the large room holding their breath and listening in adoration. Barack and Michelle Obama stare at him, ecstatic, in the first row. It's the same young man who was standing against the wall that day. He happens to be one of the greatest violinists of the world. His name is Joshua Bell. That cold Friday morning, at the Metro of Washington, he had played some of the most elegant music ever written. On a 17th century violin made by Antonio Stradivari, that he had bought for $3.5 million. Three days before the exhibition at the Metro, he had filled the 2,600 seats at Boston's Symphony Hall at an average of $100 per ticket. It's almost $300,000 of revenues for one concert. That Friday at the Metro, for the same execution, Joshua Bell made $32.17. The Washington Post had arranged his performance as an experiment on how much context impacts on perception. The experiment proved what German philosopher Immanuel Kant had written almost 250 years ago. Once, Joshua Bell told me, when you play a violin piece, you are a storyteller, you are telling a story. I am a storyteller. I tell stories at your events. And I know that success is all about the viewing conditions. And you are the wizard of viewing conditions. You are the masters of the fairy tale. Look at what's happening nowadays. We all moved online. We didn't have a choice, so we did it. But if we take a keynote speaker, even one of the greatest speakers in the world, as Joshua Bell is one of the greatest violinists, and we sit him in front of a webcam, like hundreds of people who have been FaceTiming, Zooming, Skyping over the years. What happens to his charisma? He's just another guy at his desk talking to a computer. He's just another talking head. Or we can do it in a different way. Hello, everybody. It's John Legend here. Welcome to the show. Welcome to our virtual club. This is virtual me. I'm singing live. I'm in a motion capture suit right now. And we're gonna have if you don't fill the vacuum with videos, 
animation, graphics, virtual worlds. What's left? He is just a talking head. If you take away the stage, the environment, the frame of the artwork, what happens is for Joshua Bell, the magic disappears. Luckily, there are solutions to recapture the magic. And much more, because we will soon get back to live events and the magic will flourish again and making them memorable. With one difference, all the new technologies that are emerging now as we speak. When the lockdown will be over, we will find a different world. New technologies will be available to recreate the magic and make your events remarkable. High speed networks will allow real time spatial effects. We will wow the audience with mixed reality, indoors or outdoors. Stages will change. You will set design with holograms. Robots will perform on stage. And dance too. We, keynote speakers, will have amazing remote control. And we will move inside bubbles. Last year, there was a big survey involving 3,000 top executives of medium and big companies worldwide. The survey was made by Harvard Business Review, Ernest & Young, IBM Research, top of class. The question was, what will be a key factor for your success? And they could give up to three answers. So what did they answer? Well, I'll probably need a... Uh, a screen for this. Look, 52% said robots. Understandable. Most of them were uh, manufacturing companies. 60% said digital transformation. Hmm. They will better hurry up. 72% said disruptive tech. And 80% said artificial intelligence. The game is getting tough. I cannot agree more. But wait for it. It's not finished. There is a surprise. Look at this. 99% said events. 99% of the 3,000 top executives of medium and big companies in the world think that you guys are the key factor for their success. And 90% of them think that the events are the best way to network contacts, while 97% say that the events deliver return on investment. My forecast is that beyond coronavirus, there will be a business boom for the events industry. The demand for live events will double and virtual events will continue to be in demand, making up a solid 25% of the event market. Let me leave you with a recommendation. Use the slowdown of this lockdown to become stronger, more competitive, and technologically advanced, to be fantastic when we will start meeting again. I'm doing it myself. My next keynote will be a time travel with a time machine on stage, animation and special effects, and all the new technologies that will make wonderful our life in the future. I'm Vito Di Bari, and this is my open letter to the event industry. Thank you.